This video is going to cover how to build a test script and execute one. Uh, it's going to be a brief video, so I'll jump right in. Um, also, uh, the details that I'm showing you here are going to be applicable to whatever so software or test manager that you're using. I don't care if it's TFS or Mercury or whatever test manager you're using. You still have the same principles that are involved. Um, the first column in a test script, or it's also called a test case, is going to be an ID. Now, this ID is going to tie back to, for example, your functional requirement. Uh, ID, or which should also tie back to a business requirement. This is like a many to one relationship. You might have one business requirement and several functional requirements, uh, for example. And, and it could be uh, a many to one or one to many, but usually it's many functional requirements to one business requirement. And this ID is also useful is if you want to build a, a performance matrix uh, where you can actually test the success of your testing. Um, also know that when you build a test script, it usually comes after you have built a test plan. Not everyone uses test plans. So I'm not going to argue that point. Some people take a shortcut and they just build test cases, which are also called test scripts. Uh, also know that in a real world scenario, uh, testing can go in cycles. So you might perform all of these test cases for cycle one, cycle two, cycle three, for example. So that's where the ID goes and why it's important. Uh, this particular example is going to use uh, EDI and data validation in the healthcare market. And uh, this particular one is for uh, an 837 healthcare claim. For these uh, type of testing, um, scenarios I like to include a loop and a segment and that's usually about the level of granularity that I want to keep. Um, if you want to test composites or other, or other details you can always list those in your description. The next important part of a test script is the the number of steps that you have. Some companies will want to use as many as 20 steps for one test case. I think that's not advisable uh, because usually if you're using that many steps you're probably testing more than one uh, piece of information or maybe even more than one process and I think probably one of the biggest reasons why you don't want to do that is that if you have 20 steps in one of your test cases and it fails then you're going to have to fail the entire script and it doesn't reflect well on the true success that you've had in testing and it, it doesn't make you look very good either. Uh, so I like to keep these short usually between one and four steps, six on the outside but most of them I like to keep between one and four steps. Um, also, as a quick note, if anyone would like to learn more about um, auto test case generation, let me know. I have done that for some projects as well where testing is extensive and you can actually have a test case generator, which are pretty cool, but for another video. On this particular one, let's jump in and do one. Uh, you see the uh, details that we have in this test script. We do have the description, the expected results, and the actual results. Uh, you'll typically have the tester's name or initials and the date and an artifact, which is very important to prove whether or not the test case passed or failed. So on this description for this test case that we're going to uh, actually perform, it says create an 837 professional transaction where the claim total is $10,812.72, but it doesn't equal the service line totals. And so I've created a number that's different just so that it would fail. Uh, you might want to perform a test like this if you're going to evalu uh, evaluate, for example, your edits or your air processing and, and how well it works. So uh, I'm going to jump in here to the CAT adjudication system, and I'm actually going to grab this claim and edit it I'm going to copy it. I want you to note here that um, for this particular claim, you can see in the CLMO2 the total is $10,812.72. And if you look at the line level, you can see that, for example, the total is actually $10,814.99. So it's different. But um, the CAT uh, adjudication system is polite, and you don't have to do all the calculations on your own. It actually has a balancing function that will do it for you. So when I drop this claim into the balance checker, uh, it fails it at the claim and service line level, uh, like you would expect, because these two don't match. Um, it has an interesting test case. If I wanted to, for example, look at um, a scenario where they did match, first of all, I'm going to save this screenshot. Okay, so I've got that. And just as, as an example, I'm going to go in here and actually change this so it matches $10,812.72 and then rerun the check. And you'll see over here that it does pass at the claim and service line level. This particular claim also has multiple payers and they pass on that as well. Uh, just a quick note for you. Um, see here in SVD 02, this is the total amount paid, $10,747.01 and you've got adjustments down here. At the claim level, when we go to the 2320 loop, you'll notice this segment right here, AMTD. Now this number, 10747 and one penny, equals the amount paid for this payer, 7722. And that payer is going to be in the 2330B loop in 109. That's just a side note if you're doing balancing. Uh, again, the CAD adjudication system does all this for you, so you don't have to. You just drag and drop, and it tells you uh, how your claim has balanced. This is a huge time saver for anyone who's doing testing around the healthcare market. Um, I think pretty much everyone I've run into will try to do this manually. We've taken the work out of that. Uh, it certainly will speed up your project testing time immensely, uh, as well as other functions from the system. So we've got that. Let's. Uh, 
fill out our test script, the actual results is that, um, you know what? We need to add another column in here. Um, I worked this up before the video, uh, and I've done enough of these that um, you you know you can almost forget some things sometimes if you're not careful. But the most critical part is it pass or fail. You know, uh, we'll say this one failed. Uh, next results uh, claim totals failed to match line level totals. Okay. The testers initials, DR, the date. I'm just going to put March 2020. You'll probably use a different process there. I want to show you how to include an artifact if you're using you know, a simple process like uh, Microsoft Excel. What you want to do is you want to insert the artifact by clicking on Insert, and then you click on the object, and then you create from a file, and you look for where your screenshot is. I've saved mine here, and I insert it, and I display it as an icon, and there we have it. And you can adjust this as well to make it fit in whatever size box that you've got. And there you have it, an entire test script that was completely filled out from start to finish. The next person can actually click on that embedded object and you can see the artifact. Uh, so uh, you can build any number of these test cases and this will give you a quick overview on how that works. I hope this has been beneficial to you. Uh, if you folks would like to see uh, uh, other processes like test plans or test generators, uh, test case generators or other details, just let me know. And thank you for watching my video.